Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm looking at the White Castle, which is a competitive dice placement Euro, but I'll be playing through the solo mode that comes in the game. And at the end of the playthrough, I'll have a review on the mechanics overall. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. Like this month, I had an exclusive solo play of Sky Team and an extra 20 strong play. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more great content listen to our podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So the White Castle is a quick playing Euro, as I said, and it relies on this interesting dice placement mechanic in that you have a certain number of dice based on player count. Since I'm playing solo, there are two players. And the dice go on these bridges based on color. The leftmost one and the rightmost one are available. Whenever you take one, they slide in to fill the gap. And generally, higher values are better, as you'll see in a moment. But if you take the leftmost die, you get to activate a lantern bonus that uh, is from your player board and gets stronger as you go through the game. But once you have a die, you'll place it on one of these action spaces. And if the die value is greater than the value showing on the board, you gain that many coins, the difference. So like here, a four and a three, I would gain one coin. If it's less than the value die shown on the board, you have to pay the difference. So like if I put a four on a five here, I'd have to pay one coin. If I didn't have the one coin, I couldn't go to that space at all. And based on which color dice you're putting and where you're putting them, you're going to resolve different actions. The most important being placing the meeples from your board. You start with 15 of them, five uh, warriors, samurai, uh, five farmers, and five emissaries that go to the castle. And placing them is going to give you different bonuses, give you endgame victory points. We've also got some other resources. Food, iron, and mother of pearl are used primarily to place these different uh, figures. And then these daimyo seals are also used for a lot of actions. This is the lantern bonus I mentioned when you take a uh, leftmost die and you can eventually get other cards there. Uh, you can actually take actions on your board, although they have a six value, so they're usually going to cost you. But then as you take away units, you'll get more resources and bonuses in addition to resolving the card on the right uh, for taking that action on your player board. And the game is very quick. It's three rounds, and in each round, each player only places three dice, so it tends to move pretty fast. And then whoever's most victory points at the end wins. And even though I'm not doing the review yet, I will say that I have never won <laughs> against the easiest solo mode, which is what I'm playing. We'll see if this game is uh, the charmed one that I finally win, but uh, I'm not optimistic. But let's get to it and play through the White Castle. All right, so we're going to go into the first round, and I'll explain the core actions as we go. I'm on top here, and my heron is first, so I'll take the first action. And looking at the values, man, <laughs> red and black are not great. White's pretty darn good. So I could, like, grab this three white, get two mother of pearl, and an influence increase, and then because I took the leftmost one, I'd also get the lantern bonus and another mother of pearl. But yeah, I think what I'm going to try to do is take the right black, so that'll be a four. And although I'd much rather do an action that gives me an actual figure placement, which are gonna be the dark ones, like here, and then I would get a double action. Actually, no, never mind. this is the best one to do. <laughs> so I'm going to do this one, so I get one coin, because four is one greater than three. And then I'll resolve this one first, I get a third of the daimyo seals and one resource of my choice. And I'm about to do a castle action that requires at least two mother of pearl to move up one of my courtiers, so I'm gonna increase that. And then I'll spend a daimyo seal, to take one of the three basic placement actions, the castle. And you have two options when you take the castle action. You can do either one or both. Uh, you can spend two coins to place a courtier on the gate here, which is only worth one victory point. It doesn't do anything else, so I'll do that. And you always remove the leftmost person from your domain board because uh, this becomes an action placement space and they'll give you more and more resources as you remove things. So here I would get more and more food and also be able to put a gardener down. But then the second option is you spend two Mother of Pearl to move one of your courtiers up one, or five to move them up twice, although you can't split that movement. I'll spend both the Mother of Pearl I have to move them up once. And there's a few important things with the decision I'm making of where to move them. So no matter where I go in these bottom rooms, it's going to be worth three victory points for my courtier, so that's good. But whichever card I take, I'm going to bring with me. Over to my board here, it'll replace this card, and that'll become another bonus for my lantern. See, so now uh, I'm suddenly getting influence and mother of pearl each time I take the leftmost die. But additionally, these become the actions now when I place dice on these particular spots. And also, as a final bonus, I get to immediately resolve one of the white actions on whichever card I put up here. All right, I'd kind of like to leave this one here because I do maybe want to take a red action soon, and I want to place down a warrior. So yeah, you know, I think I'll grab the same one that I just went to, so my person will go over there. I need to replace it with another card. 
And that's going to bump us down here. And I need to pick either a daimyo seal on any resource or an iron and a food. Let's go for the iron and the food. I already have a good number of daimyo seals. All right, that was my first action. They tend to chain a bit, as you saw. Now, how do Otomo actions work? They have a deck of nine cards, and on each of their turns, they're going to flip over the top one, and they're going to see if a die is in the specific position indicated, in this case, the leftmost white one. And there is indeed a three there, and then they'll place it on the exact position indicated, if possible. Uh, if they can't place there, then they go on the well instead. In this case, it is available, and they gain money if their die value is higher than what's on the board, but they don't lose money if it's lower, so they can only benefit or gain nothing. Which is why it's actually bad when they go to the well, because they're always going to get money, and you'll see in a little bit that they convert money into victory points at the end of each round. But yeah, so they're going here. They don't actually resolve anything there. It's just for blocking purposes. These are the actions they actually take. So here they're going to place a gardener on one of the right side spaces. They always choose the one that's worth the fewest victory points. And then they're going to get five coins, which again is also going to be worth victory points for them. So gardeners get placed on these spots. Each player can have one gardener on a card. So them being there doesn't prevent me from going, but they can't place another gardener on the same spot. They're worth a number of victory points for going there. So less on the left, it's one, three, and five. And more on the right here, it's a seven, seven, nine this time. And when a player places a gardener, they get to immediately resolve the action that's there. The uh, AI won't do anything like that. But also at the end of round one and two, each gardener that has at least one die on the bridge above them will get to resolve the bonus again. In round three, you don't get any bonus, so it's better to place gardeners early. All right, now in this case, uh, both of these gardeners are worth the same, so I get to pick. They're both the lowest value one. I guess I'll put it under white. I'm more likely to take a white die, and if there are no dice here, they won't get a bonus for having that gardener here this round. That's their entire action. This card goes underneath. You won't uh, go through them, in my experience, before the round ends, and then you shuffle it anyway. Now, a quick uh, note, though. If they had flipped a card and that die wasn't there, like there was no black die on the right or there was no white die on the left, they'll flip again. And that's terrible for you. <laughs> you don't want them to get lucky and uh, get spaces where the dice aren't there anymore. Because if they have to flip two or more cards, they'll resolve the last two cards flipped. So they get basically a double action instead of a single action if you had bad luck. All right, so for my next action, I think... I'm going to take the leftmost white. Again, I'd love to clear out these white dice so their gardener doesn't benefit. Uh, so that is the leftmost one. So after I place it, I'm going to get one Mother of Pearl and one Influence. Influence moves you along this passage of time track. Each time you want to cross into a new season, you need to pay the indicated number of daimyo seals or you waste that influence gain. And then as you go farther, it's worth more and more victory points. But also whoever's farther to the right or whoever's on top, whoever got there later, if you're on the same space, is going to be first player for the next round. All right, I kind of want to get a gardener down early. So even though I'm going to lose points, I'm going to put this down here. So I'm going to spend one coin out of my three. And that'll let me do either a gardener or a castle action. So these outside the uh, gate ones will let you do one of the two actions to either side. Now the space I want to go to, this was kind of dumb planning on my part, requires two food, not one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend two daimyo seals to get one of any resource. You can do that anytime. This is a terrible uh, waste of resources. But I'm going to place a gardener. On this two, oh wait, what am I doing? <laughs> the spot I wanted to go to is uh, the same spot that I was taking dice away from. Well, hopefully they won't take a white die, and then I guess I won't either. Okay, dumb move, Mike. But yeah, so that cost me two food. Uh, it's going to be worth three victory points at the end of the game. And I get to immediately resolve this, which means I can take any uh, white background action anywhere in the castle. And that's not hard to choose. I definitely want a mix of three resources. And I think I want to get one more Mother of Pearl. And one iron, because I'm hoping to place both a warrior and a courtier. We'll see if that happens. And then, I don't know, maybe am I going to place more gardeners? Maybe another iron? We'll see. All right, so that was my gardener. What are they doing? Whoops, no middle white die. They, oh, and no middle black die. Left black die. That is a one. And they're placing it right here, which gets them no coins, because one is not higher than five. And again, their last two cards, because they got lucky, are resolved. So first, they're going to place a gardener on the less valuable places. In this case, the red bridge is only worth one victory point, so that's where they go. Then they're gaining an influence and two victory points, so they will go first if neither of us move. And they're getting another influence and three coins, and also placing a courtier on the castle. Just on the gate, uh, later cards will let them move up their people with these little arrow symbols. And that comes to my last action of the round. I'm going to take the four red, which will get me one coin. I'm going here. And first, I'm going to resolve the well and coin. So I get one coin. And then the well gets me one daimyo seal, which I'm going to use in a second, and two more coins. 
So now I'm uh, much more flush with money, thankfully. And then I'm going to spend my only Daimyo Seal to take a Warrior Placement action. So Warriors go into these Training Yards. They cost one, three, or five iron. I'm going to spend three of my four to go to this one. And their Victory Point to Calculation is a little bit more complicated. Each of them is worth one or two victory points multiplied by the number of courtiers that have actually made it into the castle proper aren't on the gate. So right now I've got one. So this guy right now would be worth one times one, one victory point. But clearly every uh, courtier you get into the castle makes them worth more. So they tend to uh, kind of help each other out. And uh, along those lines, you get to take the actions here. And this one's going to let me do a castle action. So I'll get a courtier in right now. It's again going to cost me two coins to put them in the castle. And then I have exactly two Mother of Pearl. And I want to go here to get this white bonus, I think. And again, that kicks this down. So now I'm getting a coin every time I get a lantern as well. And I get this, and then I get to pick any one white bonus. And I'm going to pick a coin and a well. Remember, the well gives me two more coins. And it's also giving me this is what I really wanted, a Daimyo Seal. So I have more options for my next actions. And all right, there we go. Okay, now the Atoma still has an action to take. Uh, there is no middle red. There is a left red. Now, luckily, they've gotten very low values. Uh, and they can't go there, so they go to the well. But a one is not higher than the one on the well, so they still don't get any extra money. They're placing a samurai on the one training yard. Oh, man, then they're raising one of their people up two. <laughs> and then they're going to place a gardener on the less expensive ones and raise themselves up again. Let's do the gardener first. They're going on the three this time because they're already on the one. Then they're getting a two raise up. Now, wherever they go, they're going to get rid of the card, and I like that card. <laughs> so I'm going to have them get rid of this one. They don't get any benefit from it. They just throw it away. And then they go up again. Whenever somebody gets to the uh, top, they're worth 10 victory points. But additionally, they get to take one of these spots, and they always take the leftmost one. So this would have let me get a double lantern bonus. For them, they're just getting the victory points. So not looking great for me. They got two double turns out of three. That is uh, some bad luck there. But that's going to close out the round. You can always tell because there will be three dice left. And in this case, there's one on each bridge. So every gardener is going to activate because none of the bridges were completely cleaned out. But the first thing we do is we check the influence. Blue is now ahead, so they'll be first next round. And then this part's unique to the Automa. They're going to trade in their coins for victory points. How it works is if they're in first turn order, they're going to use three coins each for a victory point increase. If they're second, they're going to use five coins each. But the number of victory points they get for each of those trades is equal to the round number. So here they've got eight. They're going to trade in six of them, three twice, to get the round number and victory points twice. That's round one times two, two victory points. And the other two coins will go forward with them into round two when they'll be worth more. Then we resolve Gardeners. The Automa is super simple for how they get them. It's just round number of victory points for each one whose bridge had dice on them. So that's going to be one, two, three more victory points in round one. And I get to resolve a white bonus. And definitely going to do that one again because that's really good. And I think I think I want to get the one, two potential for a double like warrior and courtier placement again. I can get the Mother of Pearl maybe if I get a decently high value die that uses this. Ooh, I can actually place a warrior and get a ton of food if I do the red action. Although, yeah, that would use my one Daimyo Seal. That might work. So, yeah, we'll do that for our Gardener bonus. And we finish up the round by rolling. Ooh, these white dice were great. Oh, and the black dice too. Okay, so red's the only one with like somewhat low left values. Now, this is bad for us, of course, because that means the Atoma will be getting a lot of coins, but it's good for us because we won't have to spend all our coins. Speaking of the Atoma, I shuffle their cards for the new round, and they're going first since they have the higher influence. They're taking the left. Ooh, the leftmost red. <laughs> that was the three, but now they moved the six down to the left, so I can get a six and still get my lantern bonus. That's awesome. Uh, they're going there. No bonus coins. And, okay, interesting. They are placing a samurai at the one training yard. That's not too bad. And then they try to increase their courtier up to, but the only courtier they have is already at the top. So this is what's called a wasted action, or I don't know if they call it a wasted action, but I'm calling it that. <laughs> so they gain victory points equal to the round number, but that is like 99% of the time better than them actually taking the action because they'll always gain more victory points than like two or three. So that was awesome. All right, yeah, this is friggin' perfect. I'm gonna take this six and put it here, paying nothing. I get my lantern bonus, which gets me a second mother of pearl. Gets me an influence, gets me a coin. And I doubt it'll last long, but right now I'm in first place in influence for turn order. And then because of the courtiers I've placed, I'm going to get one, two, three food ready to place a gardener. And I can spend my one daimyo seal to do a warrior placement, which I will. I'll spend all three of my iron. 
to go here again. That's a much better space. I get both those bonuses. I get two times the number of courtiers in the castle, uh, but I don't have five iron, sadly. And then I get to place another castle action. I'll spend two coins. I'll get my third courtier down. And I'll spend two Mother of Pearl. Now, by the way, I don't have to move up the person on the gate. I could move up any of these people. So, like, I could go up there and ooh, get that and then benefit from it immediately. That's not a terrible idea. And it's actually a bigger victory point increase from one to three than three to six. The negative is this person's not actually in the castle. The gate doesn't count. So, I wouldn't be multiplying my samurai warrior values. And you know what? What the hell? Let's try this. I'm going to move this one. Well, I guess it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, I'm going to move this one up. So I'll get this, and I'll get the three resource gain again, placing it. And yeah, that'll kick this off. So now I'm getting another coin whenever I do um, a lantern action. And yes, I immediately get to benefit from that. Looking at the gardeners, the three is the one I want, so I don't want to spend more on that. Um, once again, I have the ability. Let's get some iron, I guess. Because, yeah, I could do a great, uh, like, food and coin and all kinds of stuff bonus there. Over to the Atoma for their second action. They're taking the leftmost white, which, ooh, is a five. They're definitely going to get some money here. Although not too much. They went there, and they're getting two coins, five over three. And then they're getting, ooh, a warrior on the most valuable spot. And two influence and victory points. Yeah, my hopes of being first, <laughs> probably not going to happen. All right, and I think I'm going to take the leftmost black die. This looks pretty good to me. So I'm taking leftmost, so that'll get me my lantern. I'm going to go here to place a gardener, because I got the food for it. It won't cost me or gain me any coins. But because I lanterned, I'm going to get one mother of pearl, an influence, and two coins. Let's uh, make some change here. These are worth five, by the way. And then I get to place my second gardener. I'm going to spend three food. And I want to go to this one. It's worth five victory points. I get to immediately gain a daimyo seal and two more coins. I am definitely flush with money. But sadly, that's uh, it. No fun double actions there. Whoops, I forgot to move the white die down. I'm hoping that I can maybe get another warrior slash courtier thing. Although I don't know if there's any spots that'll let me do that left. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, the AI is taking the middle white. No, they're not. Darn it. The rightmost white. Oh, that's a six. Lovely. Oh, and they're going. That's literally the spot I saw that I could have placed a warrior with. And they're getting one coin for a six over a five. Yeah, this is a bummer. Uh, they're going on the cheapier gardener spots. There is one of those left. And then getting an influence and two victory points. Oh, wait, that's right. They're doing two things. So I'll do that one. So they take the last spot, the same one I'm on, worth the most. And they don't have to worry about the daimyo seals to jump season. So now they're getting three victory points from that. Okay, and the other card, they're placing another samurai. Wow, they only have one left. And they would gain an increase, but they can't. So they're going to get the round two points again. I'm cool with that. Right now, they're only getting a single multiplier for all of these warriors. So that's not getting them too many points. All right, and to finish things up, I am flush with options. The problem is I want to put some people down. I'm not sure if anything's going to let me do that. So the best things I have are white and black. Those will both get me uh, the bonuses and a bunch of money, probably. Where can I actually go? Okay, white would let me put down a farmer. but I don't have any food, and my lantern bonuses wouldn't get me any. Black here would get me Mother of Pearl, would get me a Daimyo Seal, would get me a victory point, but no placement. I really want to place something. Those spots are gone. Dang, the Automa <laughs> got lucky blocking me there. And yeah, I could do white and black here, but I wouldn't get to put anybody down. I would get a crud ton of resources, though. So maybe that is the best thing to do and to set myself up for some like really cool turns next time. Yeah, I think that's it. So the white one looks better for me because I don't want to like run out of space for iron. So I'm going there. Um, because I took the leftmost. Oh, I'm not getting any coins from placing that. I get a mother of pearl. I get another influence, and I get two coins. I will need a daimyo seal if I get another influence later. Then I'm getting three more mother of pearl, and then I'm getting three of whatever. I want to get two more iron so I can go to that best uh, samurai spot. The five's already going to give me a double increase uh, with uh, one of my courtiers. Should I get one food? That is uh, the one left bridge I haven't gone on yet. So, uh, sure. All right, and that'll finish out the round. Uh, they are in front of me, so they stay there, which means they're spending three coins to get the round number of victory points, two. Then we're doing gardeners. I didn't realize I cleared out the white bridge, but hey, that actually works out better for me because they're missing out on four victory points here. I'm just missing out on some white banner, which, <laughs> I mean, it probably would have been resources I might not have been able to hold, but they are getting four from these people. 
That's number of round times number of gardeners, so two and two. And I'm getting a well, which gets me a daimyo seal and two more coins. So you really don't want to have a lot of coins at the end of the game. Five of them plus daimyo seals, each five set of coins and daimyo seals is worth one victory point. So yeah, it's much better to like get a lot of lantern actions and spend your money than be stuck with a ton of coins at the end. All right, and here we go into the final round. And yeah, black is not looking great. White doesn't start great. Red is awesome. Hopefully they don't grab that too early. All right, they are first, and oh, <laughs> yep, they took the middle red, which is a five. We're going on, it's the action to the left of this, so it's going to take two, or give them two, I should say. It was over a three, and they get to put a new courtier in the gate. They were looking for that, and then get an influence in three money. Not terrible, not great. And for my first action, I think this is pretty obvious. If I clear out the red, I take away something from one of their gardeners. Oh, that's... Although, wait, never mind. In the third round, you don't get gardener bonuses anyway. But yeah, I'm going to go here. So it is going to cost me two coins. Although I get two back, so whatever. I get three food. I took the leftmost, so I get two more coins. And a mother of pearl. And an influence. And I will spend one of my two daimyo seals to jump into... What season is that? That's winter. That must be fall. So we're into summer. And we started in spring. Maybe. Mike's not very good with the seasons. And then most importantly, I do get to do a warrior placement. I'm going to spend all five of my iron to get the best one. Here we go. So I get five more coins. Oh my gosh. But then the big thing is I get to take any uh, die action of my choice on the board. Oh, and I was worried because I didn't see a castle one, but actually this is going to be even better. I'm going to choose to take uh, one of these gardener placements because I have exactly four food. So I'm going to place a gardener here. And then this one lets me spend three coins. I definitely have coins to take a castle action. So I'm going to do all three this turn. Awesome. Got to spend another two coins to place the courtier here. But hey, I've got 16 left. So I'm not worried about that. And then I'm going to spend five Mother of Pearl to get a double jump. So I want to get one of them up to one of these. And yeah, I think I'd definitely rather get this white bonus than that one. So let's send them straight here. Get that for us. So this will come down, and that's an actual victory point every time I get the lantern bonus. And now I get that, and I get the white bonus immediately. So I get a well, which will be a daimyo seal and two coins. And I get this two victory points straight up. Which, is this right? Those are my first actual victory points on the board. <laughs> you tend to get mostly end game. It's the uh, Automa that tends to get a bunch during the game. All right, that was a busy turn. Let's see what they get. Uh, rightmost white, that's going to be a five rather than taking the leftmost white, and they're going here. And they get to place, okay, they can't place there, so they're going to get three or three points, but they can raise up a person. They always choose their lowest one. I definitely don't want to go here, so let's get rid of that card. Well, I shouldn't say don't want to, I can't go there. But yeah, they also get three or three points for not being able to take the gardener placement. Right, this one's going to be ugly, but I have a ton of money, so I can do it. The only places that will let me do a castle placement easily is, like, right here. So I'm going to take the leftmost black die and pay four. So there goes some of my money to be able to do a castle. Now, because I took the leftmost black die, I do get a mother of pearl first. Clearly, that's going to be important. And a victory point, two more coins. So I got some of my money back and an influence increase. So at least for the moment, I'm in first place, which again, is just going to affect their uh, final coin conversion. I'm going to spend two more money to place my very last courtier. And then I have two mother of pearl to push one of them up. And I'm torn here. Do I want to get up to here or get somebody else in the castle? I think I'm going to go up here because none of the like actions over here look the best. It's a four victory point jump. I'm going to get to do a lantern and get some iron so I can hopefully like place a warrior for my last turn. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that. That was two iron and lantern. So I'm getting, oh my gosh, I really tried to get rid of money, but it didn't work. <laughs> and a mother of pearl and an influence and a victory point. Okay, final action for the Atoma. Let's see what they got. Middle white, there is none. Darn it. Left black, there is. They're getting just two. And they can't go there, so they go into the well. Well's value of one, so they get one coin. And let's see, they get to put a courtier on the castle gate and then move that same courtier up one, so that is going to increase their whole multiplier by one. That's a bummer. I'm definitely going to have them go here because there's one white die left, and I'm hoping they replace this with a better, like, black place a person action here. Okay. I do have iron. Perfect. That's great. So I'll definitely be placing a white die for my last turn, I think. Okay, so that was both of those. Then they can't place somebody there, so that's three or three points. So five or three points and influence, which annoying puts them right in front of me. Uh, but if I can get influence this turn, which I should, right? Because for my last action, I'm going to take a left to die, then it should be fine. So yeah, here we go. Only one left die left. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put... Oh, wait. Crud. 
I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yeah, darn. I'm realizing I won't have enough Daimyo Seals. Oh, well. I think it's still the best thing I can do. Um, okay. I'm going to go here. <laughs> I'm going to pay two coins because it's one over three. Or Yeah. And I'll get a food and a Mother of Pearl. I'll spend a Daimyo Seal to place a warrior. So here's the bad part. I was hoping that I could spend two Daimyo Seals to get my iron up to three, which would have then let me go to the spot that lets me also do a castle action, and I could have moved up one of my courtiers. But... I don't have enough iron. I don't have any way to get it. I can't spend all this money on it, unfortunately. <laughs> so, oh well, I'm just placing a warrior, and I can only spend the one iron. So, it's like getting me three or three points, and a well action. And the well action gets me that, and more coins. Oh my gosh, why do I care? Yeah, that was not as good of an ending as I'd hoped. I should have gotten more victory points there. Oh wait, I did take the leftmost thing, so I should have gotten another Mother of Pearl, an influence, two more money, and a victory point. And the influence actually matters, so that was good at least. All right, and that'll be the end of the round. Not optimistic about my chances here. They're going to trade in coins. They only get to trade in five for the round number three because I was first at the end. All right, then I get to gain my points. For every five, I get one victory point, including Daimyo Seal. So one, two, three. Three plus two is five. Four victory points. I am not going to catch them. <laughs> okay, then passage of time. We both reached the three value spot, so that's a wash. I'm at a 12, and they're at 34, by the way, a bit ahead of me. Okay, then we score our clan members. So uh, they've got for courtiers 10, 13, 16. Takes them to 50. <laughs> Lovely. And I've got 10, 16, 19, 20, 21. Takes me to 33. All right, then we do these guys. Uh, they've got 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember, these are worth 2. That's worth 1. 5 times 3 courtiers. That's 15. Gets them to 65. They've almost lapped me. And I've got 2, 3, 4, 5 times 3. Also 15. I'm up to 48. And last is Gardeners. They've got 3, 8, 9, 16, and I've got 3, 8, 15. So again, pretty much a wash. Uh, so I got to 63. This is after lapping around 4 once. And they had 16, so that gets them, oh, they wrap around again to 81. Oh, and wait, I forgot. Mother of Pearl is at 3 or higher, which means it's worth 1 victory point. If you get resources at the end up to 7, they're worth 2. So yeah, 63 for me, I think, and 81 for them. So I've lost by more, but I've never won. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my sixth game of uh, playing on the solo mode, and I've never won it. On that note, let's get into the review. So, uh, first of all, things I like. The basic dice grabbing and dice placement. It's certainly more interesting in multiplayer, especially with three or four players, but in the solo, it's still pretty cool. You know, they do benefit from high dice values, getting coins for them, just like you do. Uh, the choice of when you want to take from the left, maybe lose some coins, but get your increasing bonuses of your uh, lantern. I find that really neat. And the placement actions. I like the like doubling up of colors sometimes. I like how much variability there is in these being cards. So every game, your action options and your tactical picture is going to be different. That's all great. And I find the placement of your meeples and how they kind of interact with each other and give you more actions, give you like kind of that combo feel. That's a lot of fun. Now, I, I will say, <laughs> although the tactical picture changes game to game, I haven't felt like the strategic picture changes much because you are generally placing a decent number of all the meeples. This is not one of those years where you can like, at least for me, maybe I'm just bad at the game. This is not one of those years where you can like really laser in on one specific strategy and go whole hog after it and it'll feel like a different game than normal. Uh, but still, it feels fun. The tactics are great. I like all of that. And again, the feeling of growth in uh, getting your lantern built up, of being able to do like these actions and get tons of resources and the cool choices and like trying to get the right cards to be here so you can unlock the correct actions, dealing with uh, these things, you know, all the different resources. It's like a pretty clean game. It's not too hard to teach to people in my experience, but it plays well. It plays quickly. Almost a little too quickly, honestly, for me. The fact that you literally only take nine actions <laughs> in the entire game. I mean, clearly, as you saw in the playthrough, they're going to combo into each other. But still, you're picking three dice around three times in the game, and that's it. So it does, I don't know, f feel a little maybe too breezy. But that's a minor complaint because I do like uh, quick playing Euros. But the other complaint, it's a much bigger one, the Atoma. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Well, okay, let me let me uh, let me couch that a little bit. It's it's good in that it's very quick to play, and it gets in your way, right? So it'll put it'll block action spaces. It can punish you for leaving high value dice because they'll grab them. Um, but yeah, first of all, I've never won on the easiest difficulty setting after six plays. Going on BGG, I see everyone else saying it's super hard too. So I think they completely 
completely got the balance of the game wrong. <laughs> like, I should not be losing on my sixth play. Unless I'm just really bad, and everyone else that I've seen playing the game is really bad. I should not be losing on my sixth play of the game on the easiest difficulty by, like, double digit, like, 20 points or more. That just seems way off. And really, it's just very swingy. Like, when they get a double action, which you can vaguely control because you can see like which card is on top so you know they won't take that die but still it's very random whether they can get a got die or not and whether they get that double action or not but that is just explosively huge whether they get the double action or not and also in kind of a perverse way makes me never want to be in front of them in turn order until the end of the game because if they're taking dice after me they're more likely for the dice to be gone they're more likely to get a double turn they're more likely to add like 10 extra points to their turn. So it's, it's weird. Like you don't really want to get in the turn order and easy mode has you start as the first player. I think it'd be better if you didn't start as the first player. I think it'd be easier to score. So that just seems off. Uh, the randomness of the actions, usually they get pretty consistent points, but I've had some games where they had a lot of these courtier increase actions, but didn't have anybody on the uh, castle gates to move up. And they were just getting those like one or two or three points based on the round bonuses. And that is such a like weird thing for them because when I had a game like that where they didn't get this, this is the only time I almost won. They were like 20 or 30 points lower than they normally are just because of some random card flips that again, I had nothing to do with. So it gets out of the way quickly. <laughs> it's quick to resolve. If you kind of treat the game as like a beat your own score and to see how well you can do and ignore the Automa score, I think it can be pretty enjoyable because it still lets you play like the actual gameplay in a fun way. But yeah, in terms of like a competitive opponent, this just seems like such a miss and such a like swingy random kind of mess of an Automa. So <laughs> I'm not sure I can recommend this one for solo, but I think it's a pretty clean, nice, quick Euro for multiplayer. Probably worth checking out if it fits your uh, needs and wants. So yeah, there you go. That's the White Castle. Sorry the solo picture isn't too great for it. And hey, a quick addition I'm going to have in some of our videos is a shout out for our highest Patreon supporters. These are our co-op champions. And I've got four to mention and thank today. Dan Kirstead, Jay Willie, Joshua Thomas, and Nick Skeen. So Dan, Jay, Joshua, Nick, and all of our amazing Patreon supporters, thanks for keeping the uh, channel going, giving us the money to buy new equipment and uh, purchase games for coverage and all that kind of stuff. I uh, really, really appreciate you. And everybody else, good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.